A cycle of destined and karmatic change is about to befall all of us. It's a cycle that happens in this way that it's about to happen every 18 and a half years. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the movement of the North Node into the sign of Aries in the Western Tropical Zodiac and the South Node into the sign of Libra. This wave of change last happened for the world back in the year 2000 and four and 2006 in that range of time december of 2004 through to june of 2000 and to 2006 and this kind of wave of change is back again so you might want to as you get ready to listen to this video and find out how this is going to impact you based on your sun moon and rising sign you might want to think back to what you were doing in your life back in that window of time what changes were occurring in some area of your life between december 27 2024 and june 22 2006 and you can spread the wings out a little bit further than that you may go mid 2004 to mid 2006 or the end of 2006. well here we go again now, this part of your sky, Aries and Libra, are opposite each other because the North Node, South Node are like barbells. They have, like, they're never disconnected. I wish I had a barbell handy. You know, I have a hairbrush. <laughs> it's like a hairbrush, you know, and it's doing this thing, right? South Node, North Node are opposite ends of a pole. They're mathematically precisely the opposite, and they're going to do this kind of action as they move around the sky. The nodes of fate move opposite to the direction of planetary motion. So the nodes of fate most recently were in the sign of Taurus and Scorpio, and now we're moving back, the North Node from Taurus, back through the sky towards Aries, the sign before it. This is going to be somehow most impactful to people who are angular or involved in this directly. That would be you, Aries rising, you, Libra rising. <laughs> Whoa, you guys are getting a lot of intensity here. Sun and moon, Aries and Libra secondarily. Cancer, Capricorn, the crossbars axis are also getting like an axis of destiny, like a cross, are also getting huge change energies over the next year and a half to two years through this new energy that will begin on July the 18th and complete on June the 11th. I mean, sorry, January the 11th, 2025. Uh, so this is kind of like to look back is to look forward, right? So we're going to do a little backward looking, and we're going to talk about how this impacts you based on your rising sign, then sun and moon secondarily, and how it might impact the world. Because there's a possibility for a, like a once every hundred year change when it comes to war and conflict that I think is rather good that's going to come through this north node transit through the sign of Aries as the North Node in 2024 bumps into Chiron. And I'll explain that in a minute. We only see that on average once every hundred years. So it could be very good for world peace in some way now, or a de-escalation in war, despite everyone's fears about war. Now let's talk about the idea of you guys being born with your North Node in the sign of Aries and your South Node in the sign of Libra. Some of you will have that arrangement that's going to double down the intensity beyond what I just said like how this is so intense for Aries and Libra and Cancer and Capricorn all experiencing major changes over the next year and a half to two years that's true and you know and flowing easy changes go to you know other signs you know like the fire signs Leo Sag Aries you know are all getting the trine from the north node and that can be quite sweet and there's going to be changes that feel pretty auspicious same with the trines to the south node in the sign of Libra those would be the Gemini's of the world and the Aquarians feeling this axis of change being rather smooth and easy and maybe fortunate in some way but here's the thing some of you will be have a birth time when you which you had the north node in aries and the south node in libra i'm going to name the dates get a pen get a paper i do talk fast play me back if you want later or put me on slow mode in youtube land so that you can capture this data so you will have your north node in the sign of aries if you were born between august the 20th 1967 and April the 19th, 1969. If you were born then, next, between April the 7th of 1986 to December 2nd of 1987, you will have the North Node in your natal chart in the sign of Aries. And if you were born between December 27th, 2004, and June the 22nd, 2006, you will have the North Node in the sign of Aries.
And lastly, of course, if you are born now between July 18th of 2023 or January 11th, 2025, anyone have babies in the hopper, then this is going to be your placement. Anyone though in those other dates that I gave you, 67, 86, 2004, right, to 69, 87, and 2006, those windows that I've already itemized, you're having a nodal return. In other words, the North Node is coming back to meet with your natal North Node. The transiting North Node will meet with your natal North Node. The transiting South Node across the way, remember the barbell with my hairbrush, opposite ends of a pole, will also be receiving a south node return. This nodal return is intense energy of significant, powerful dust and change. This is independent on, of whether you are a Aries, Libra, Cancer, or Capricorn rising. This is simply to say that the Aries and Libra houses of your whole sign natal chart are going to be intensely activated, and it's going to try to pivot you in a nodal return as well back towards something to do with one's destiny. Technically, having Chiron and Aries, which is only once every hundred years, makes this a very special nodal return for those people who are born with this North Node in Aries. Now, a lot of people ask me, North node, south node, right? By the way, north node, also known as Rahu, south node K2 in Indian astrology, they are mathematical points. They are not planetary bodies. They are where the eclipses happen. It's where the sun and the moon create eclipses. It's a, it's a mathematical point in the sky on what's called the ecliptic. Now, second of all, there is something called a half nodal return. People ask me about this all of the time. I don't have a, like a lot of time to explain it, but I will give you the dates for those of you born with the opposite. That would be your south node in Aries and your north node in Libra, because yes, you will experience this next 18 months and a half or so as a half nodal return. And that is also important, but I don't find half nodal returns in my database of clients to be the most difficult. It's like, Rahu, the North Node, is being tempered by the transiting South Node, taking some of the heat and the intensity and the drive and ambition of Rahu, who can be like a grasping, striving, you know, urgent demon energy, <laughs> and reducing that and softening it. Because K2 or the South Node energies represent enlightenment, surrender, release, let go, spirituality, and awareness and awakening in the Indian astrology. See, and then the opposite is true, right? Then you're having your south node amplified huh, by the north node in a transit through the real sky. Your natal south node is receiving a transiting north node. And that's a balancing. It's like the teeter-totter is even. Instead of it being tilted way over and way like this for the full nodal return people, it's trying to find a balancing point. I'm going to give you the dates for half nodal return. You will have the half nodal return in the next 18 months if you were born between June the 17th, 1958, and December the 15th, 1959. That simply means that your North Node is in Libra and your South Node in your natal chart is in the sign of Aries. January 8th, 1977 to July 5th, 1978, you're gonna have a half nodal return in this 18 month period of the nodes through Taurus and Libra. August 1st, 1995 to January 25th, 1997, you guys are having a half nodal return. And lastly, if you are born between February 19th, 2014, and November 11th, 2015, and you're that young watching my YouTube channel, welcome, you're having a half nodal return. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the world, and we're going to talk about your sign. Now when it comes to your sign, you want to check the timestamps and you want to uh, jump ahead, go ahead, but listen a bit for the collective. I think you'll like it. And I forgot to introduce myself. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothian. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac. I'm using whole sign houses as are all astrologers on YouTube when we delineate for the bell curve general public. Not all astrology that you listen to on YouTube is going to be true or accurate, including mine. So take it all with a grain of salt. Plus, we're talking about general bell curve astrology. We're talking about central tendencies, right? Your natal chart is unique. It's different. It has so much rich information. You'll need to see an astrologer to know exactly what's going to happen. You can't see me. I'm not promoting myself. I'm booked up till next year. Get on my wait list. I'm just trying to tell you that you can't go, wow, astrology doesn't work because the astrologer's report didn't come true on YouTube. At that point, I want to tell you to get a brain, okay? We're talking about general trends 
based on a rising sign and then sun and moon secondarily. Sun can be about father, father figures and per career and purpose, moon, mother, mother figures, home, nest, safety, and emotional set points. So you see that's why the rising sign is most accurate. It's about you slicing into reality with the sky lining up to the Western tropical symbolic zodiac at the time of your birth. And it's your vantage point at the steering wheel of your life that is your rising sign. All right, moving forward. Let's make one distinction here. I'm not about to tell you that your soul's evolution depends on the North Node and that your past lives and that where you can get stuck is your South Node. It may be true. That's modern astrology. That's Dane Rudyar. That's a modern interpretation. In India, ee, the South Node is it's good. Let go, release, surrender. Yes, loss and disappointment, but you get out of the matrix like Neo. You're not chasing after the, you know, the the, the, the superficial stuff, you're not like striving, grasping, you're not losing your head. So the tail of the serpent, which is Rahu or the South Node, has spiritual wisdom, it has deep connection to divine impulse. It can be about weight awakening. And then the North Node from the Indian perspective can be where we lose our head and we get all caught up in the game of life and we can lose ourselves there. So it's not all so simple. And as well in Hellenistic astrology, the North Node expands what it touches. If the North Node is touching a malefic like Mars and Saturn, it'll expand the energies of that negative planet. If the North Node is touching a benefic like Venus and Jupiter, it can expand the beneficence of those planets. So you have to understand there's not a consensus in astrology about how those nodal axes really play out. All I can say in my experience is it indicates change. Keyword change, big change, fated change, a feeling like you got on a ride at the midway and you cannot control the steering wheel, okay? You just have to go on the ride and see where the change is taking you. I'll give you an example for me. Back in, oh, by the way, hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Check my description box for everything I have down below. If you join my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter before the end of July, you're going to get my 2023 60 minutes times 12 videos for free. They were for sale for $47. They still are. But if you want to sign up for my newsletter, you're going to get an inbox email right away, giving you access to all that information, giving you a six month more predictive sky for your sign in greater depth. That's my promotion for the month. Check it out below. And my Patreon community is amazing. Amazing. Come join me there and get ad free content before anybody else rather than have to watch the ads here on YouTube for five bucks a month and meetings with me as well. Now let's get going and go back to one more thing I was saying, and that is, oh, I forgot <laughs> me, my example. So I'm living in Montreal, Canada in 2000, and I moved there in 2019, and along comes an eclipse right on my IC, Gemini, eight degrees. The eclipse was literally on the IC. The root of the chart represents where you're living, and, and it can be very indicative of something big when an eclipse happens there, a big move. Well, yeah, I'm like, I'm not moving Montreal. I love Montreal. I'm staying here forever. How it can't get me out of Montreal? Good food, good wine. Also, pandemic kind of ruined that. I moved. I mean, the sky was right. I had a reason to move. It was a full moon on my IC in the fall, November of 2021. No, November of 2000 and. 19. And by the time I got to, you know, March of 2020, one, I knew, no, I apologize. There was an eclipse <laughs> in November of 2020. And by March of 21, I knew why I was moving and I moved and I'm, now I'm living in Vancouver, Canada instead. So yes, eclipses can, I didn't feel like I had a choice actually, but I did, but it, destiny was moving me along so look at your eclipse energies waving through your libra aries one of two houses of your 12th house pie slice they're always opposite each other opposite each other we'll be doing this in the delineation this is where your change is going to happen over the next 18 months just as it may have happened back in the day the last time this occurred for you remember the dates i gave you well if i haven't again let me repeat the dates that this has happened before you can go back to what was happening december 27 2004 to june 22nd 2006 last time this change wave happened april the 7th 1986 to december 2nd 1987, last time this change wave happened for you. And August the 20th, 1967 to April 19th, 1969, the last time this change wave happened for you. All right. If you're old enough to remember back then, then you'll know you can, you know, look at these patterns and see, if, look what repeats in your life. Let's take a look at the sky before we do the all signs. I will talk about some general themes here as well. 
why I think war could de-escalate, especially in 2004, and prove to be futile, fruitless, and a waste of life force energy as well as lives is, is something to do with Chiron. So let's look at the sky together. Number one. Let me pull up this. All right, annotations. Um, number one, the nodes of fate are traveling in 2000, and I've just got it set to 20, July 22nd, but it starts on July 18th. The nodes of fate, south node in Libra, north node up here. Now, in Aries, I just, you know, I'm, I'm casting for Leo rising here. The dealio is simple. Number one, you can see that Pluto is sitting here. And I did a whole video on this. Please go watch it. It's a lovely video, trended really well. It's out there. It's called the Nodes of Fate Square Pluto. Well, a lot of astrologers talked about the Nodes of Fate squaring Pluto. This is the Nodes of Fate squaring Pluto because it's in sign, right? I use in sign aspects only. Pluto in Capricorn is in a square or nine degrees exactly from south node, north node axes here. This creates a very gnarly, t-square energy very tense this is in play all through july and august for the world and i'm not going to repeat that video go listen to it for details for the world and for your sign i go into a lot of content there that and that's not that common that square with pluto to the nodes of fate is rare in this particular way you're seeing it and i delineate the old the time frames for that in the past in my last video on this on my channel look at my current transits playlist or just look at my channel and I'll put a link to that video below. The video I'm doing today, I also did a video in December about the nodes of fate changing signs. You can go listen to my December video. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. And I'll also talk about new things today. By the way, my description box is just the thing that's underneath the more button. Some people go, well, I don't see a link. Where is it? It's in the description box. Now, the other thing I want you to notice, okay, is that as the North Node is moving through here, it will eventually because it's going backwards, it's going this way, it will bump into Chiron and that will happen in 2024 in the month of March. When that, those two come together, historically, it's been about a de-escalation of war. Sometimes coups, by the way, but also a de-escalation of war. For example, they last came together here because it's a once every hundred year transit, usually, okay? So it last happened in nine, about a hundred years. It happened in 1969. And that was when Nixon started to de-escalate the Vietnam War and pull troops out of Vietnam and was beginning to turn down the dial and the heat on the U.S. involvement as, as public sentiment in the U.S. became... Uh, very protest oriented, and there was increasing dissatisfaction. This was also the same year that the My Lai massacre occurred and really shook the world, uh, or discovery of the massacre hit the news, news cycle. So basically, it was a pulling down the heat or the temperature on an existing war. Why would Chiron do that? Aries is a sign of war, or the soldier, or conflict, or combat, and other things, pioneering and stuff like that. And Chiron was the mentor of the healer, heroes and healers of the ancient world. He mentored Achilles, the great warrior. He mentor, mentored a lot of them. I think he mentored Hercules as well. And the gist of it here is that Chiron always went for the noble. Do not shoot or kill or maim or harm, you know, animals, children that are not a threat to you. It was all about noble warriorship. And so the de-escalation of Vietnam began in March of 1969 with this energy of Chiron at the north node in the sign of aries the next time this occurred or the past time before was 1875 in the month of february and i found an interesting news story about this war that didn't happen it was called um there was a name for it, the war scare of 1875 bismarck and europe were you know like heating up so basically there was an international crisis as the war, war, world was like on a brink of war, thinking that in 1875, there was going to be a war. So German diplomats apparently hinted that Germany might launch a war against France. Like, hello, <laughs> that's a big deal, right? And it never happened. And so bottom line is it was also kind of 
coming to a close of a bunch of wars that had a history of war since the 1850s, okay, and power grabs, like the Russians grabbing Crimea. Let me look at the details here, what happened. The Russians grabbed Crimea recently. By the summer of 1875, powers were beginning to turn their attention toward unrest in the Balkans, which dominated the rest of the decade. In some ways, the war scare of the spring of 1875 is important because nothing happened. That's according to the reading I'm reading on Wiki, I think. So it, it kind of marked the belated end to a series of great power conflicts. It began with the Crimean War in 1854, and it signaled a new period of peace in, a new period of peace, okay, in European politics. As the Russian foreign minister, and to a lesser extent, Israeli government, Disraeli's government, made it clear that neither would tolerate a German war of aggression against France. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not going to go back through all of the histories, because this happened as well in 1820 April, 1726 July, 1633, and onward, backward in time. But I'm seeing a pattern in only two of de-escalation of heat and temperatures around conflict and war. And so we could only say, yay, us in 2004, that any kind of conflict may settle out, basically. Um, by the time this happens next year, Pluto will move into Aquarius, no longer being in that tight actual square to the nodes of fate. And also Pluto and Aquarius is part of, with Uranus and Taurus, the story of the aliens. Yes, the UFOs, the disclosures, the aliens. Who's to say that the, you know, an alien doesn't land, you know, in the, on the White House lawn, the old joke, and start a peace treaty between warring nations or something like that. If you're going to be a part of Club Galactica and join the Federation of Planets, you've got to stop killing each other on planet Earth or something like that. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else I want to tell you? Um, okay, hang on. As I look at this sky, I'd say to you, um, just pay attention to a couple of themes here, right? I want to bring it to your attention. This is going to be Saturn for the entire duration of the nodal transit in the sign of Pisces with Neptune there. This means that Saturn is not participating with the nodes of fate. It's just not doing a darn thing. The, the Aries node is ruled by Mars. The Libra node is ruled by Venus. These are the planetary bodies that have the most impact during the next 18 and a half months as they are the rulers of the nodes of fate. For example, Venus in Leo from June the 5th through to October the 9th is in a flow aspect to the nodes of fate. So this is simply saying Venus sitting uh, here in the sign of Leo is in a trine. She'll be going through Leo for a long time. There she is flowing to the north node and flowing to the south node and therefore she creates a wedge in general with the nodes of fate which is kind of she's breaking any tensions here and she's a benefic so if you see june july august september into early october this nodal transit has some bonification or some beneficence to it despite the square to pluto which will be in effect technically as a broad square through to january of next year but more intense intense perfection of that square being felt through July, August into September. Now, but with Saturn not participating, being a malefic planet, having no hands-on experience with this, can't touch it, he's in aversion. We do not do semi-sextiles or 30 degrees away or one house away in the ancient system. So he's off duty, not causing any harm. Unfortunately, Jupiter is not helping or hindering because he's a benefic, but, and there is a big but, he will move over here in May of 2024 into Gemini. It will be May 24th, I think, 2024. And he will begin to form a flowing relationship to the nodes of fate, especially Chiron and the node of fate in March of 2024, bringing something very positive into the story. But until he gets there, he can neither harm nor hinder what's happening, but he begins to apply positive pressure next May throughout the end of the cycle until January of 2025. There's a lot of love from Jupiter. So I'm going to say for the world, end of story, this feels like one of the more positive versions of this narrative. There will be times when Mars, as the ruler of the North Node, can cause challenges, particularly when Mars is activating the nodal axis himself. We'll be doing that in a breakdown, breaking down all the details of say Mars on the south node, Mars square the north node, and Mars co-joining with the north node 
So those south node, north node, and the square to that will be happening in our sky during this 18 and a half month period. And I'll break that down in individual videos. So that's why you might want to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. It will benefit you to do so. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be one of my longer videos. I don't think it is. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think I spent a good hour and a half talking about this in my December video, which you can rewatch. It's in the description box. So I'm rather going to be rather quick, but succinct and hopefully useful as I move you through this story for your sign. This time around, I'm going to focus on the chironic healing, but the general meaning as well as we talk about the general gist of the nodes being in Aries and Libra for each sign, but then also I think I'm going to highlight the March of 2024 intersection with Chiron, all right? Kombucha. Okay, so do I want to show you the sky and just wheel us around? I think so. So I'm going to pause the recording and come right back once I adjust the chart. So what I did when I was fixing my chart is I added some asteroids. I added the asteroid echo for unrequited love or, you know, something echoing back at you. And Proserpina, which is like Persephone, the god of the underworld, the goddess who became queen of the underworld, but she was abducted by Hades or Pluto and taken there. So it's a story of trauma, of abduction. It's kind of a, you know, spoiler alert, a rape story apparently. But she ended up becoming the queen of heaven or the underworld, sorry, the queen of the underworld. And therefore, she's, she's also a redemption story of power for females. And um, so the whole Proserpina thing is embedded in the Chironic story because Chiron is with Proserpina, the asteroid, as the North Node travels over him, as well as the asteroid Echo. So there's a lot of intensity around those themes that are baking in uh, to the story. I'll try to apply that to your life, as well as the asteroid um the asteroid Characlo. Now she's about sort of gentleness, unconditional love, healing, magic, and miracles. There she is up here. She's a trans-Neptunian body, actually. So Characlo is up here at 14 degrees, as you can see. And as you can see, and down here in the Aries corridor is Chiron in the North Node meeting at 16 degrees of Aries. So this is the story we're going to talk about. And uh, just before I do, I'm going to uh, just double check. There's no stars there. Well, I'm so glad I checked. By the way, it's so hot here in Vancouver, Canada. I've got a fan going. Yes, I do. I might put it right on my face in a minute. So, yes, we do have an amazing star here. So I'm glad I took a look for you guys. There is a star that is called Nodus, N-O-D-U-S, Nodus. The North Node and Chiron are both on Nodus. Now, this is the star Nodus 2, and this is a fixed star that is in the the delta star of the constellation draco the dragon now that sounds eerie and bad i know and it's interesting because the north node itself can be considered to be the head of the serpent which is also a dragon energy and it's about transformative healing restoration to wholeness healing in response to distress or crises which needs corrective action forces of change rise to news rise to new levels of knowledge okay new levels of knowledge a healing transformation restoration to wholeness this is a star upon which chiron and the north node sit when they co-join in march of 2024 the indicator will be a part of your life that needs to be deeply healed it could be a place of unrequited love echo give me a minute it's way too hot and it could be a star now i've got the movie star hair blowing in the wind and it could be a star that has some connection to a place of deep uh feeling of powerlessness of being abducted by life into some difficult circumstance like persephone the maiden being taken to the underworld and you are going to be able to be feeling some redemptive healing around those underworld stories of your life as a result of what happens in november of 2000, I mean, March of 2024, as this once every hundred year event occurs in your lifetime, you chose to try this out for size. I'm going to see what it's like to have this redemptive and powerful transformative healing of some deep chironic wound in my sky in the Aries piece of real estate, one of 12 chunks of real estate in your sky. I hope that fan doesn't make my mic sound weird, but I cannot deal 
with no air on my body at this juncture. So bear with me, all right? Now we're gonna go through the picture for you so that all of you who love to learn astrology and a lot of my followers say what they love about my channel is they learn here. That reminds me, if you're watching in the live premiere and you have yet to hit the like button, will you do that and help my channel grow? I would so appreciate that. And if you're new to my channel and haven't checked my description box below this video for everything I offer, and if you do like my content and you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, more than half of my, my regular viewers are subscribers. The YouTube algorithm prefers. The more subscribers that you have and your regular viewers, the better. I'm aiming for 100,000 subscribers. By the end of this year, I'm at 33,500 when I record this for my Patreon community on June the 29th and put it out to you guys a few days later. All right, number one, if you are an Aries rising, sun or moon, you can see what's happening here. It's all in the house of you. You are experiencing a major healing of your identity. And since 2019, the movement of Chiron through the house of you has been some sort of attempt by the sky to cure you of something that ails you, some kind of identity crisis. Now, I am an Aries sun and moon. Of course, rising is going to be more accurate. And I can relate to 2019 as Chiron entered Aries, beginning a, a crisis of identity as I moved to Montreal, changed my whole life around. And what happened? I became a full-time astrologer, right? And so there was a change of identity as I became more chironic. Chiron can represent one's truest purpose, one's original medicine for the world, and the deepest aspects of how you can be of a guiding mentorship energy to others around you. So all you Aries people who are experiencing this shift in 2024, this is a story here. Go back. First of all, let's go to the basics. Go back to 2000, I said this at the beginning, but I'll remind everybody, please go back and see what was happening in your life. The last time this nodal shift occurred in December of 2004 to June of 2006, because you'll be able to connect the dots. What kinds of changes of your identity, expansion of your identity occurred as the North Node traveled through the first house and renovated you, expanded you, changed who you think you are. And you may have in 2004 to 2006 let go of some sort of significant relationship in your life. I let go of my marriage and the father of my children and 20 years, that was when I was divorced, separating and divorcing. I'm an Aries sun and moon. So go back and see what were you letting go of, releasing and surrendering, feeling disappointed in it. And it comes to significant marriage-like relationships relationships and how are you expanding your identity into something new so I, back in the day i was expanding my identity into an online person writing my first online report for tarot.com tarot on astrology numerology and the tarot and i started to make money online being esoteric before that i wasn't doing that now with the chiron north node thing with echo and with the energy of um, proserpina. If you've ever been stuck in it, like an echo chamber in your life, you've ever felt like there's a place where you're unrequited, especially when it comes to significant love relationships, that's all being very transformed, very healed, very much made whole with the star that we talked about, notice, and of course the asteroids themselves. You can look for a deep chironic healing. It also pulls in power from your 11th house of great gains from your career, um, friends and favors from allies, um, people who who want to help benefit you and some of the deepest dreams and wishes of your life may be magically and miraculously Chericlo in the 11th coming true during this cycle of 2004 I mean 2023 July to January 11th 2025 look for that deeper chironic healing though starting next year particularly at the epicenter of next March this doesn't mean for all Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising, you're going to leave a marriage or relationship because a South Node in Libra, especially for single people, can bring a new relationship into your life as well. So it can also operate to bring in a soulmate, a destined, fated new relationship. If you're already in a relationship, though, it is a challenging transit. And you may say that between July 18th of 23 and January 11th of 25, especially for Aries Rising, you may experience a tremendous amount of stress or or disappointment or challenges in an existing relationship. More true for Aries rising, less so for sun and moon.
finally, because Aries rising, you are a Mars ruled being and the eclipses are happening in the sign that belongs to your ruler Mars. If you were diving down the astrology rabbit hole, go find out what Mars is doing in your chart. What does he want for you? You know, what's his, what's his agenda for you? What house does he concern himself with? Because that may be also very active as this North node transit happens through the first house. And finally, all being, I will say this for all signs, you know, Mars is the Lord of the North node traveling through his house. So the other house that he's the ruler of in the sky traditionally, right? is a traditional ruler of Scorpio, not Pluto. So your eighth house of chunky money, shared resources, and all of that can be sideways involved in this energy of this cycle, but less so because of its aversion. And I'm really pointing this out because as well, Mars is the exaltation lord for Capricorn, and I might do this for all signs, and therefore your 10th house of career is going to also change. Your 10th house of career and purpose will change, but in a very powerful or expansive or exalted way. It's good news on the career front. Over the next 18 months, with change applied to self, career is also expanding and exalting as well. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. Most accurate as well, rising. Hit the like button. If you're watching the live premiere, thank you so much. So Taurus people, this energy is the energy of a north node eclipse cycle moving through your 12th house, while the south node is moving through your 6th house, last seen at a theater near you, back, as I said at the beginning of the video, December 2004 to June of 2026, and before that, April of 86 to December of 87 and onward. Watch the beginning of my video. You might be able to track cycles of change that involve the following themes. Foreign house, foreign shores, foreign lands. Revenue from foreign shores and foreign lands. These are 12th house themes. Spiritual awakening, spiritual deepening, uh, expanding your spiritual life. Um, more time alone, more solitude, more... Um, investigation of your soul. I'm talking 12th house themes. At the same time, the South Node is pulling away from the sixth house and you may say, letting go of a job, letting go of a path, losing a pet, um, uh, illnesses and health challenges may have occurred during the last cycle of 2004 to 2006, South Node transit through your sixth house. If that was true, it doesn't mean it's always the same story. We have planets in different places in the sky each single time. Now, with this said, this kind of cycle of 12th house, 6th house change, I will remind you, this is the axis of magic or karma. These are between the worlds, above the worlds, beyond the worlds, the metacosmos houses of the zodiac, 6 and 12. And this means that they're also suggestive of this could be a very subtle and spiritual kind of experience. You may be having energies of awakening or deepening of your soul's journey in life a finding of a faith, a philosophy. Because it's activating the nine, a third house axes as well, you may find yourself involved in new educational pursuits, going back to school, learning something new, skill space, or even higher education. Some of you also may experience moving or traveling to foreign lands and foreign shores. This would be more true if you are having an IC in the third house in the sign of cancer and the midheaven in the ninth house in capricorn that could relocate you to a new home but even a new country this cycle also can bring you into contact with hospitals people sick in hospitals uh, helping the underdog uh, serving the underprivileged or even a connection to mental mental health institutions if you're looking for a guide a guru or a shaman or a healer Something here is happening in March of 2024 with this combination of planets. I think you may meet your, you know, a shaman guide, spiritual mentor, teacher, healer of your lifetime. This is a once every hundred year opportunity next March that is also about redeeming yourself from the place of deep, deep, unrequited results, things that didn't work, maybe even a feeling of being pulled into the underworld in this 12th house placement. And 12th house underworlds can be jails and hospitals and mental health institutions or addictions. And so if anything like addictions have beleaguered you or you've been struggling with overdoing some substance that you know is bad for you, or you've been your own worst enemy and self undoing your life, this is your turnaround point in March of 2024. Get ready to feel, you know, the 
what is it with that song amazing grace basically of some sort but you might get involved in a teaching program a rehab facility um you might find a particular type of mentor or guide or coach or therapist that's really going to help you in any of these areas of difficulty in next march of 2024. if you are a gemini sun moon and rising sign the story is about this movement of the nodes of fate on July the 18th to January 11th of 2025 through your 5th and 11th house last saw this action the same way December 27th 2004 to Jan- June 22nd 2006 in general go back to most of 2005 and halfway through 2006 at the very least for change that happened then that's reoccurring now technically you can even go as I said earlier, mid-2004 to the end of 2006 and say, what was the change cycle about, right, Gemini? Well, the change cycle in your life is suggesting greater career gains, expansion of your reputation in your career, an increase of your friends and friendship circles. Uh, That's the North Node through the 11th. Uh, expanding your dreams and goals and wishes for your own life, having an expansion of influence uh, with groups of people, at the same time, this south node is pulling you away from the fifth house energies, and you're spending less time with your children. You're less romantically inclined. If you're single, you could meet a soulmate romantic partner, but otherwise, this is pulling away, deflating the air of your Libra romance house. And so you may have gone into a romance downturn, a romance and sexuality downturn, a, a difficulty with children, childbirth, labor, and raising kids, or just a letting go of those things, maybe even just a denesting of a child, for example, as a south node transit your fifth house you're paying less attention to your kids at the very least as you focus more on 11th house main goals dreams wishes great gains from your career groups of power and influence and tribes of belonging joining new groups of belonging like associations or clubs it's a positive transit because the north node is moving through a positive and very fortunate house and it's not that difficult as well for a gemini because it's in a flow to your ascendant identity and therefore all of this is going to feel like a very kind of nice ride. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a roller coaster. It's going to be the Ferris wheel or the, uh, what do you call it? The horses, the merry-go-round. It also will wake up. Well, we have Characlo in the ninth house. So some of you, I might've forgot to talk about Characlo for Taurus. I apologize. But for some of you, there's going to be some healing, some kind of uh, a mir- miraculous, juicy grace vibe in the house of God, in the house of foreign shores and courts, or the house of third marriages and the system I use. Um, so there's that sweet vibe coming from Characlo as well. More particularly, I'm talking about March of 2024. This whole nodal cycle will crosshair the axis of your second and eighth house, which are very oriented towards finances. So you can say as well, there's a huge change in the financial out- out picture of your life, in the way you earn the money you earn, in the way you save and, and invest and parlay the money you have into more money. Huge amount of shift in the financial axis is definitely a part of it. You may come into chunky money, inheritance money, uh, spousal shared resource money, greater gains during this cycle that lasts 18 and a half months. And you may even be pulling a little bit away from the way you've made money before to try something new. So new earning strategies can be in the offing. Finally, in 2024, during the month of March, when the North Node will collide, with um, Chiron, you may feel that you have he- a chance to 100, uh, 100 year rare opportunity to heal some kind of wound when it comes to belonging, especially to social groups. And if that's you felt like an outsider since 2019, for some reason, this can be very healing as you begin to find new social groups of belonging that really feel like your tribe, and you no longer feel like the outcast. Chiron coming through here since 2019 has been making that quite an issue for some of you Gemini rising sun and moon people. My progressed sun is in Gemini and in 2019 I became very isolated as I moved away from all my friends and I felt and lived in a French culture and felt very much like living in Montreal as much as I loved it. I was definitely feeling like I had um, a social outcast vibe or I didn't have any large groups of friendships that really felt meaningful to me. 
And so I would say to you, the healing of that kind of thing is an effort, evidence for you starting next March. And finally, if you've always wanted to be involved in like being a, a, a movement maker, uh, charging ahead on some new movement, Chiron here is about purpose. And this is like, you know, the this is like the have a dream, you know, Martin Luther King vibe. This is Maria Montessori, a whole new vibe of education. If you ever want to transform the world because you're a movement maker, this March of 2024 really opens up the potential for that as well. As you heal some chironic wound around belongingness and your wishes and dreams may be never really materializing. And every time you tried, you were abducted into a failure or a feeling of ennui and now you're healing something here where you go forward from next march in a new all systems go vibe cancer sun moon and rising the experience for you oh my god am i recording thank god <laughs> if you're in the live premiere did you hit the like button if not why not please help me out and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and all of the good news that i do everything i do is in my description box below including my offerings of mm, all kinds of cool stuff hopefully you caught the offerings in the beginning of the video back to you guys I am sharing, right? You guys see that? I had a moment. Yes, you do. Okay. Cancer, sun, moon, especially most accurate rising sign. The energy of the eclipses, you're one of the angular houses. <clears throat> Remember I told you in the beginning, Libra, um, Aries, Capricorn, Cancers feel a lot of like life change, wheel of fortune, destiny pivots with this cycle. All the eclipses are squaring you. Okay, so number one, clearly you're going to experience an expansion of your 10th house. North node is still going to blow something up, make it larger, expand it and change it. What's it going to change your career, your career path. You become a workaholic here. Be careful. North node through the 10th house gets people grinding pretty hard to get success. So be careful. You don't become so ambitious that you lose your, your, your rooting and foundation in your fourth house of home, time at home, domestic, private life, quietude and solitude at home, but you're going to expand. So in the next, you know, July 18th uh, to epicenter July 18th to January 11th of 2025 expansion in career. At the same time, the South Node is pulling your time away from your private life, your home life, your domestic life, as you get energetically attentive and super busy in the 10th house of your reputation, career and career success. You're retired, then what are you doing that the world's seeing you do? You're retired and all you do is like all day go help people with gardens or something that's your career purpose think purpose don't get fixated on the word career how do people see you operating in the world your visible actions in the high noon of the sky are expanding and you're less inclined to spend time at home maybe watching netflix or hiding out or you're less attentive to your home now if your ic is in the fourth house floating ic in the whole sign house system and your midheaven is the tenth this is even more true even more true but also Nonetheless, a south node transit through the fourth house means a, a loss or change of home, a letting go of a home, a surrender of a home. Some of you are surrendering your home. There's a lot of cancer risings who will sell or move or buy or change their home. Not everyone, bell curve astrology, but a lot of you will have a significant change of home or homeland in this 18 and a half month window of this eclipse cycle. A lot depends on your natal chart, but that's a general truth. The axis of your marriage and your sense of identity are being activated on the crosshairs of this cycle. Houses one and seven are activated as this energy moves through here. Maybe I should try to actually annotate that. I wonder if I could do that for the future. And you guys will know what I mean when I say crosshairs. Aha, Lori has an annotation instinct here. You know, crosshairs. There we go. I bet you it'll just rotate, but it may not. Annotations are tricky. So basically, your first and seventh house become highly active as these eclipses move through four and 10. So you may have changes in your marital status, changes in your significant relationship. It can be new beginnings or it can be the endings of a relationship as well as over those 18 months, you can have changes in your health, your identity, your sense of self. Selfhood itself is under some kind of shift of tension around change. 
like I'm, you know, I'm a married, I'm single, I'm widowed, I'm, you know, uh, I'm divorced. These are changes that could be very well clearly happening for some cancer risings, especially over the next year and a half, sun and moon secondarily. There's a big healing coming through the sky next March, and that is when Chiron is going to connect with the North Node and the asteroids of <clears throat> Echo for the Echo Chamber, Unrequited Love, um, you know, talking into the air and having your voice bounce back at you, for example and the asteroid of Proserpina being abduct abducted to the underworld. What difficulties have you experienced in your reputation, your visible actions and career, where you may have felt, first of all, sort of like futility, frustration, wanting to do what you want to do, but having it not come back at you or being pulled into an underworld, like fired from your job or some horrible career developments that really bothered you. If any of those have been happening, especially since 2019, as Chiron entered into your 10th house there's a profound wholeness healing energy draco the star is up there next march as you find maybe your true the key chiron to your true purpose and your original medicine what you're here for one of the chironic meanings we often find our gifts in the wounds that we have healed in this case it could be a reputation wound or a career path wound or a purpose wound with help from charcoal in the eighth house with the magic and miracles and sweet goodness of her unconditional love you may be also experiencing a very nice glow up next March that really heals you financially as well as in your career reputation as money is more made available to you from the eighth house. Now that's also inheritance money, spousal support, and income from your marriage partner and business partner that you share. And that kind of money is uh, up leveling for you as well in the spring of 2024. Oops. I want to stop the annotation. It's not letting me do it. Okay. Um, I apologize. Annotation. Can you just stop annotating? <laughs> there we go. And yes, the crosshairs don't continue. So I have to remove that. Hang on. Uh, now I've stuck something on the chart that I can't get rid of. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, Lori, that was fun, but not fun. How do I remove the annotation? Let's go. Uh, annotate. Annotate. And clear. Okay. So if you're um, a Leo sun, moon, and rising sign, the energy is going to be a movement that you haven't seen since December of 2004 to June of 2006 of the nodes of fate through your house three and nine in whole sign houses. Now, don't forget that you can go back through time as well to 86 to 87 and see what was happening. The cycle doth repeat. This is going to be a flowing and gentle and easy cycle as all cycles go because it's flowing from the north and south node and sextile trine to your ascendant identity. I mentioned this in the beginning. So this is not the most harsh transit. It is your merry-go-round instead of your roller coaster. The change is in the ninth house where the big energy of change wants to happen. So you may move to another country, travel extensively to foreign shores, take some kind of higher education direction. You may publish a book. You may uh, get involved in a third marriage situation, like your third marriage partner arrives on your doorstep. You may also find yourself facing court and legal matters, but likely amplifying it in a way that allows you to be victorious. You may find that your tension is pulled away this, you know, July 18th to next January 25 pulled away, January 2025, pulled away from your third house, less attention to your siblings, less attention to aunts, uncles, cousins, less attention to uh, traveling short distances, or less attention to your online world, websites, blogs, less attention to, you know, something you've been learning in the past, and you no longer wish to learn it. Now, if your IC is here, because your IC can float through the houses three and nine, depending IC, MC axis, whole sign house system, uh, depends on what latitude of birth you're at. But long story short, if your IC falls in your whole sign Libra third house, you could move from that, but a gentle, easy, graceful move through your sky during this 18 month window. Sometimes, unfortunately, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, and siblings, south node transit can be the end of that relationship, a disappointment, a letting go in that kind of connection with a sibling, just so you know. 
the eclipses that will be happening in your third house, meaning eclipse a relationship with a third house person, certainly could draw an end to a relationship. You're very eclipse driven. You're a Leo. Sun is your um, helmsman of your chart or your major uh, planetary ruler. And so eclipses are always involving sun, moon conjunctions or oppositions. And so eclipses really influence you as well as cancers in this lifetime. So you might find this eclipse energy can be particularly intense depending on your degree of your rising sun over the next 18 months, whether the eclipse is of the early part of this or the late part of this, like there's an last Aries eclipse in March of 2025, whether these are going to make you change your home or not, but you could definitely have a shift of home or homeland. The crosshairs of the eclipse cycle move through 6 and 12, change of work, change of health status, change of pets, change of rental properties may be possible, change of... Um, 12th house matters, you know, uh, revenue from foreign countries changing, travel to foreign countries, uh, foreign shores, foreigners, changes regarding themes of hospitals and um, isolation and aloneness. If you've been alone a lot, then this cycle can shift how alone you might be and less alone perhaps. But there's a shift to the 12, 6 axes as well as a 9, 3 axis of the chart. Some of you definitely would probably quit a job, leave a career path behind as change is occurring that involves that sixth house of the job, the work, the work routines and stuff like that. With this March 24th activation of your ninth house, there's Chiron North Node, last seen 100 years earlier, happened roughly, happening in your ninth house. What is this Chironic, once in a lifetime healing, bringing you wholeness, new wellness to your ninth house of God? If you've been disillusioned by your religious path, you don't have a spiritual philosophy or faith to anchor you, Chiron could bring in your true calling around that, your true purpose, like the path of spiritual attainment is best for you the faith, spiritual faith that's best for you next March. Chiron can also heal things to do with a wound around academics, around uh, foreign countries, or again, third marriages, or a wound that you've been dealing with since 2019 around what you believe to be true about God, truth, and wisdom. This also can heal the wound with any father or father figures in your life. And this March 24th healing is about a place where you've also felt unrequited. I pick up the phone to God and God never calls me back. <laughs> I'm talking to the wall here, echo chamber and also where have you been dragged into the underworld where you've lost a spiritual truth or faith or a sense of unique purpose in your life the dharma why am i here this kind of existential you know crisis can be healed as you have this eclipse cycle through the house of god the ninth house and the third house of the goddess some of you will adopt a firm, formal religious faith in the 18 months that follow this transit Not everybody, but some of you. All right, why am I annotating? That's not what I want to do. All right, Virgo, Sun, oh, let me go back a bit. I apologize for Leo's Characlo is healing your marriage. Characlo is bringing healing magic, unconditional love to significant relationships with clients, audience, marketplace, marriage and business partners as a result of the March of 2024 conjunction of uh, uh, Chiron with the North Node. I've got it set for February because you start to feel it already in February, but it's most precise in March, I believe. All right, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Hey, guys, are you in the live premiere? You forgot to hit that like button. Don't, don't forget to punch my like button, boost my algorithm, help me grow. I really appreciate that. My last video didn't do so well. For some reason, the Mercury Kazemi video was uh, less follow through by you guys than normal. I think it's because it was a short video. So if you hit the like button, I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. So if you are a Virgo sun, moon, but most accurately rising sign, you're having a money story event here. This is a change in your money story. End of story, end of story. It's not necessarily hard or difficult. It just is. And that's because this is a nodal axis and aversion to your ascendant. In other words, 30 and 150 degrees away, but it still influences your two and eight house of money 
and this is going to be letting go and surrendering, releasing between January 17th, 18th and January 11th of 2025, some kind of way of making money. And you may experience an expansion of your money and assets through the house of inheritance, through the house of chunky money from an investment in a stock market, through money your spouse is making, you're sharing together, through money you get through, and did I say investments? Yes. So chunky money becomes more of a source as it expands and expands and expands something in your life around that kind of financial resourcefulness in your life, not the earnings and paycheck at all. And you last felt this energy in your life uh, back in December of 2004 to June of 2006. What ways did you inherit money, expand money, grow money, etc.? Some of you are too young for this, of course, but some of you will have stories of financial expansion in that window. You know, it's interesting, my daughter is a Virgo rising and her grandfather died and left money to her father during that time. And that could also have expanded her sense of wealth because she would have had a happier dad with more money. But all I'm saying is that definitely look at the past to look at the future. Go back to April of, two, April of 1986 to December of 1987 or August of 1967 to April of 1969. I gave these dates in the beginning, but these are when this money t changes were happening for you. If you're interested in the esoteric occult mysteries, if you want to become an astrologer, tarot card reader, or explore talking to dead people, you may have a talent here because of something I'm going to talk about shortly, but eighth house matters expand. You may go down the rabbit hole of the esoteric, occult, paranormal, and supernatural worlds over the next 18 months. The axis that's crosshairs here is 11-5. This is a money luck, speculation, lottery win, Play, joy, pleasure, and romantic love, sexuality, place, and children in conception, and accessing the crosshairs of the 11th house of great gains from your career, good spirit, basically, friends as favors and allies from benefact, benefiting from your friends, elder sibling, and all of those. Changes in elder sibling relationship, changes in your wishes and goals and dreams for your life, changes in the greater gains you achieve from your career path. Changes going on with regard to children, fertility, pregnancy, sexuality, and romance all are highlighted in the time frame of the 18 months of this nodal axis change of direction. Now, in next February, March, basically, but more precise in March, the node of fate will co-join with Chiron for once in a hundred year healing of eighth house matters. Chiron entered your eighth house of chunky money and non resources from other people. All right, he entered that part of your chart way the heck back in 2019. And he'll be there until 2026, but this is where you're trying to heal some fundamental crisis wound here of not being feeling good about this. So um, are you not feeling financially supported by your spouse? Are you feeling unsupported by inheritance monies that are supposedly there for you, but they're not? Or where are you having an unrequited echo chamber as you investigate the occult mysteries or something like that next year in March, you're going to answer these questions. Where have you been dragged into the underworld with sexual taboo topics that bring you shame? Um, Persephone's here in the eighth house, secrets, especially sexual. If this has been an, a wounded issue and you've never told those secrets and you are a Virgo, then this is being healed. Time to realize it's no longer needed to hold on to um, trauma stories involving se illicit or forbidden sexuality. And this will open up a new direction for you around purpose as well, because Chiron can be connected to one's truer purpose. Some of you may be involved in psychotherapy, becoming a therapist, guide, mentor, healer for others as a career path as a result of what's happening next March as Chiron North Node join together in your eighth house of psychology and the psyche and the underpinnings of the psych psyche of humankind. Chericlo adds some spice in the house of work. She's unconditional love and magic and miracles and graceful, yay. And she is sitting in your sixth house in a flow, in a flow to the nose of fate, creating a temporary wedge, meaning that you can see good things happening regarding karmic debts, real debts that you hold, pets, things to do with the death of a pet, having a transformation in your life, because this is a house of death, the eighth house with charcoal in the house of pets, or maybe something to do with um, a situation involving your work and your work can be experiencing this miracle transformation vibe next February, March as well. Okay, let's continue on. 
All right, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. If you're a Libra, you're experiencing the axis of change between July the 18th and all the way until January 11th of 2025. You're experiencing this axis of change in the house of your identity and the house of marriage. If you are a single Libra rising, having the North Node for 18 months moving through your seventh house can bring you a new and very destined relationship. If you're already with someone, this will expand the parameters of the relationship you already have and ask it to grow a more fertile, larger pot for the soil of your relationship. It will expand it, change it, and grow it into something new. You might want to go back to the last time it happened, which I mentioned in the beginning, which was in 2004, December through June of 2006. And you can basically even go middle of 2004 to the end of 2006. What changes were happening in your relationships to significant monogamous partnerships uh, is very likely that theme. If you're old enough, you might go back to 19, spring of 86 to the end of 87 for similar questions. This is where you experience tremendous change in the past. South node going through the house of you for this next 18 months or so is asking you to release, surrender, and let go of a sense of identity. Who do you think you are is deeply, deeply shifting as you release stuff. South node through the house of your identity can bring back past life gifts, talents, even memories as you encounter aspects of you that may be connected to other times and places. Watch for your health. This is a depleting transit that can make you very tired. You may find yourself physically lacking vitality, and you'll need to take care of your health proactively during this 18-month transit. If you are also wanting to look at the crosshairs, which we'll do because you're Libra, Angular, career, 10th house and home property real estate, 4th house are under renovation. If your whole sign house system floating IC is in the 4th house and floating midheaven is in the 10th house, or in other words, in Cancer, right, or Capricorn, you could move. It could be a very significant transitory trans, transit over the next 18 months to two years with a significant relocation of your home. Not a minor one. This is a very destined, faded change of home coming to a theater near you. A lot will depend, of course, on your specific natal chart. Like, for instance, if you're having a change of home, where does Saturn sit in your natal chart? What condition is he in? But because you Libras will have the exaltation of your fourth house by rising Mars in January of 24, a lot of you in the two years that follow this January will find a beautiful, more extensively, yay you, property, home, real estate story emerging in your sky anyway. So a lot of you will find a new home and changes in career. Some of you will let go of, surrender, and release an old career path, or begin something new, or both. Characlo, okay, let's move forward to March, February, March of 2024, a once every hundred year healing of things to do with how you relate to your clients, customers, business partners, and marriage partner. 2019, Chiron entered your marriage house. You may have involved, got involved in relationships since then, and you feel deeply wounded by them. The relationships in your business partnerships and marriage partnerships feel difficult. You feel wounded. The wound is healing in some significant way. The unrequited love is being requited. The dark night of the soul of being dragged into the underworld in relationships is coming to a close. Whether that's a business client, client or your main squeeze, you're healing those relationships during March, February, March of 2024. With Chericlo in the house of entrepreneurship, children, romance, sexuality, you may be healing sexual wounding, rom romantic wounding, entrepreneurial wounding because none of your businesses were taking off and you kept throwing stuff into the marketplace seventh house and you felt like you were echo chambering with your audience clients and marketplace and suddenly there's a healing chair clothes offering up something new anything creative artistic you're doing uh, in that fifth house is Cherico's imbuement in next February March bringing something magical enchanting and wonderful about what you're up to creatively All right, we can continue moving, but it looks like a lot of healing going on next February, March around significant love relationships as you let go of some identity here. You know, a lot of this narrative can be a deep healing, not just about the relationship that's not working for you, but who you are in relationship. I'll give you a, a flaky example. 
you're in a heterosexual relationship, but you're really gay. <laughs> I mean, that's not just a small change of identity to heal the relating part of your sky. It's huge, right? Or you're, you know, you feel like a dis, you know, a, a disconnect from your, your, you think you're really a woman or a man. I mean, it could be that kind of thing for some of you Libra risings during this tr transit of the south node through the house of you. But look to February, March for some significant breakthrough and healing regarding sexuality, gender, love, romance, identity, those key words. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, Scorpio, in your narrative, the story is telling you that you're going through your change cycle over July of this year to January of 2025 through the identity, through the axis of 12 and 6. Now, it's subtle. It doesn't harm or hurt. It's subtle. It's very, very subtle. South node through the 12th house, ashrams, gurus, teachers, solitude. Are you letting go of solitude or seeking it? Are you deepening your spirituality? Rahu Ketu. Ketu is a spiritual part of you in the moksha house of great enlightenment, the 12th house. You're deepening your soulful connection to past lives, to your soul, to who you are. But you may also be experiencing things like letting go of a path of career that involved revenue from foreign shores or releasing yourself from self undoing addictions and bad habits. The North Node cycle through the sixth house expands your work and work routines, it betters your health as you find solutions and healers to help you perhaps. And you may expand as well in terms of things to do with how you approach the themes of pets or rental properties. Now you last experienced this 12, six axis of change way the heck back in December of 2004 to June of 2006 and before that in April of 86 to December of 87. So you might want to track back for patterns that repeat Scorpio rising people, sun and moon. This is a metacosmos between the world's vibe, above the world's, beyond the world's. It's very subtle. A lot of you are dealing up karmic debt, debt relationships, unwinding self undoing and restoring a sense of balance to that part of your life. The crosshairs of the nine, three God house of goddess, the third house and not house of God, the ninth house are activated. You may have more connection with siblings, trips, travel, skills based learning and teaching, as well as foreign shores and lands. Some of you may move. Uh, if the south node, I mean, if the IC is in the third house and the midheaven is in the ninth house or IC is in Capricorn, midheaven is in Cancer in the whole sign house system for you, you could end up moving your home to a new neighborhood or a new for country even. You definitely can have new developments with siblings and expansion of those relationships or reduction in the sibling connections in your life, as well as extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews. If you do online social media and platforms, that's your third house, and that can indicate changes in how you experience your social media online world over the next 18 months. If you do book publishing as a part of your thing, or you need to uh, get something published, ninth house, so this is going to make changes in that part of your sky and it's going to be the north node in a superior or applying access to the ninth so you could actually have some success in terms of publishing and book publishing if you're a scorpio rising and that's something you wish to do but some of you can move and again it could be foreign countries that you're moving to or from as foreign from your place of your birth now in the spring in February and in March, a once every hundred year rare conjoining of Chiron and the North Node will occur with unrequited love, echo chamber echo, and the deep dive of the underworld Persephone abduction into a darker place in the sixth house. There's a healing here. It can be something as simple as a pet losing a pet and having to heal deeper emotional wounds through the lost grief of a pet who passes. That's an example. But also the sixth house is karmic debt relationships. Now, maybe you're having some deep, profound healings in some of those types of relationships that are deeply karmatic in February and in March. And you may have felt dragged into the underworld by those relationships. And you may have felt unrequited in those dating relationships because dating can be the sixth house. And there's a big healing going on in February and March, healing your soul in that area. Chericlo is bringing some healing regards to your home and private life and some magical, unconditional love and miracles as well as she is opening up a wedge from 612, 612 to the fourth house. You may rent the beautiful, perfect property for you. 
for example, or find a way next February, March to rent out the perfect place. If any, you have any wounds about the livelihood you're doing, the work that you do in the world, it feels like Judy and drudgery instead of service and servitude. I mean, service and service. It feels like servitude instead of service. It feels like duty and drudgery instead of destiny. If you're feeling those feelings in the work you're doing in the world, this eclipse cycle is going to try to change that, especially February, March, where you may heal some unique purpose signature regarding the work you're doing in the world and a sense maybe of missing the mark and being dissatisfied. And that can begin to change in this 18 month cycle, but more precisely February and March of next year. <clears throat> Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is the energy in your natal sky of the north node moving through the fifth house and the south node moving through the 11th house. You last experienced, by the way, this energy in December of 2004 to June of 2006. You also felt it April of 1986 to December of 1987. This is in a flowing relationship to your Sagittarius ascendant, as I described earlier in the video at the beginning. It's, it's like getting on a merry-go-round, not the roller coaster of change. The changes in a fertility house, children, pregnancy, a romance and sexuality. Some of you may experience an expansion of those themes. You might end up having a child, getting pregnant, your partner gets pregnant, you expand in romance and sexual energies, you enjoy your life more, or you start your own entrepreneurial business because the fifth house is the entrepreneur's house or your creativity flourishes. You're pulling away from the visible world. You may be quitting a job, retiring, leaving behind greater gains from your career. Focus more on the sort of artist studio of the fifth house or the entrepreneurial energies. If you have been institutionally hired in the past, worked for organizations, companies, or corporations, South Node and the 11th can indicate a letting go of those paths as you let go of those types of earning structures. You may also find that the crosshairs of two eight, both money houses being highly activated, change the way you earn money and the way you make money, make money or share money with a, a resourceful partner. So your eighth house monies are changing and they're definitely not going to be the same. So you may do stock investments differently. You may got, you may receive inheritance and inheritance money during this transit. Some of you can get money from a sibling as well in 2024 from this transit. Now, um, the energy of the fifth house is about what gives you joy, what expands you, what makes you vital and spirited, filled with spirit, enthusiastic, entheos, joy, everything. And so a North Node is like striving to find the answer. I mean, the North Node transit through my fifth house ended up a lot of attention to my children. I thought maybe I'd get a romantic love. So just note that you may be looking for the partner, striving for the romance, wanting to connect deeply to your children, wanting to find the joy in life. Be careful you don't become obsessed with it, right? North Node is intense here, but you can have some money luck here and you can win some money as well with the North Node here. That's definitely very, very possible. If that's going to happen to win some money, you could actually be more likely uh, as this transit happens sometime in May of next year, add six months. I won't say why right now. In the meantime, look at the crosshairs of 8-2. Are you trying to change your earning structure? Are you trying to make money in a different way? I won't go into the Mars story, but 24, 25, 20, 24 and 25, a lot of Sag risings, specifically Sun and Moon secondarily, are going to increase their earnings strategically and in a very escalated, fast-moving, exciting way, your money is going to improve. It looks like a new way of earning money is coming to you over those two years. So this is going to activate a lot more financial gain, but less so from inheritance, spousal money, and career gains directly. Like, you know, it's more like, what are you doing that has got a new hustle to it. And it may be very entrepreneurial for some of you. On February and March, you have this energy of healing, the unrequited love, the unrequited fertility, the wound with a child, the disconnection from your creativity, where you've been abducted, unrequited, echo chambering, it comes to some he deep, profound healing. And Charcoal helps advise you and heal as well through the wedge formation next February, March involving siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, and skills-based learning and education trips and travel. Any of those can help facilitate this greater healing around what really is some of your deepest talents that you may have that you've never fully recognized or have been recognized by others. 
The online world and the writing house is where Characlo is. If writing is important to you, blogging or just writing in general, you could have some big breakthroughs in that area next February and March. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. In your natal sky, you are experiencing this energy, like angular energy that I brought up earlier. You're one of the major players for this eclipse cycle through your houses of 10, career, and for home property real estate. It activates as well the house of marriage here, as well as the house of health, identity, and selfhood. Wowzer, big changes in self and identity, home property land and real estate or homeland, marriage, marriage partnerships, and career. Now, a lot of this suggests for you, go back first of all, to December of 2004 to June of 2006. Also go back to April of 1986 and December of 1987. What changes in identity, marriage, home, and career energies were playing through your sky, they're back. It's different every time, but they're just as true. You're being asked in the cycle of this July 18th to, sorry about the smacking sound, to January of 2000 and 2025 to release, surrender, let go of an, a, a career identity, basically. What ways have you identified as this kind of person in the visible world that does labor in things, especially if your whole sign midheaven is in your 10th house and your IC is in your fourth. So in other words, do you have your midheaven in Libra and your IC in Aries? Because they float in the whole sign house system. And if that's the case, then this is going to be very critical for you because you may be letting go of a career path, a purpose, and a direction that you thought was really about what you were about, and it's no longer going to work for you. You're going to retire, quit, change, or shift your work and career and reputation and purpose. But at the same time, you're expanding property, home, land, and real estate, and maybe even moving, changing your home. You may experience a profound sense here of wanting to um, dive into your ancestral line, understand your family of origin, connect to your mother more deeply as well during this transit. Because as well, you have activation of the seventh house, you could get married or divorced during this time frame of July the 18th. This year, until June of next January of 2025, some of you will divorce, separate, or marry, or get engaged. All of those are very possible. Very intense change cycle for many of you. Now, you know, Chiron's been moving through your fourth house, making you feel like you don't belong to your very deep roots of your family of origin. You feel like the outsider in your family, basically. You may also feel like you don't belong to the place you're living. Uh, and this has been true maybe since 2019. Now this is healing profoundly so you can originate a new purpose for your life even as you heal some ancestral wounds, the wound of not belonging to your family. Were you the black sheep, the white sheep, the changeling? Where did you feel wounded there? Now it's coming to an end because the echo chamber is also coming to an end down here where you're unrequited in your meaning uh, of your childhood or the way you were raised. Maybe also with a Persephone vibe, where have you been abducted to an underworld difficult experience in your childhood that really wretchedly hurt you? And now in February and March of next year, you can really resolve this in a very exciting new way. And during that time, Characlose piping in from the second house of self-worth and self-esteem, as well as your voice in the world, as well as your facial appearance, as well as the house that connects to your earnings and money that flows into your life. There's a lot of Capricorn, especially rising, but sun and moon have a profound healing around some deep childhood wounds, perhaps, and a sense of coming to terms with those so that you can now be more self-worth, self-love, self-acceptance oriented, worthy of your life and worthy of the great financial love that Charcoal can bring you here and really open up a new door of prosperity for some of you Capricorns. If that's true, which it may be, you'll find that maybe in 2026, as, as Saturn in February enters into the fourth house for you, that's where you see the real deep result of this chironic healing of your childhood stuff as it applies itself to a new magical miracles, unconditional love way of creating your resources, finances, and money in the world. Okay, then we're moving on. 
Aquarius, sun, moon, and of course rising. But you know, your rising sign will be most accurate usually. I'm one of you guys. Yes. Hey, in your live premiere and you haven't hit the like button, please consider doing so. It helps my channel grow. And if you haven't checked my description box, check it out. Everything I'm offering, all my specials, all my cool stuff is in that. A lot of freebies as well. All right, Aquarius. Uh, but go back as well to, you know, 2004, December to 2006, June. You could even start as early as summer of 2004 to the end of 2020, 2006. That was the last time this change cycle, change cycle activated. You can also go back to April of 86 to December of 87. And these are the cycles of change through your third and ninth house. Now, third house energy is you expanding, growing, and emerging greater and larger than life in the third house of writing, the third house of the online platforms, websites, the third house of skill space, education, and teaching, whether you're the teacher or the student. This is the house of siblings. You may be connecting more broadly and deeply and widely to those siblings in your life aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews as well over this 18-month cycle of July of this year to January of 2025. You may also, if you have any wounds with a sibling, be healing them. We'll get to that later. That's next year. If you are somebody who's a writer or you're involved in the online world and have a website, etc., or social media platforms are active in your reality, this is really positive for you. This is going to expand your presence there. Be careful you don't become obsessed with it because the North Node can be obsessive, but you're expanding your, uh, your, your reach there. As a writer, of course, it's an amazing transit. So I'll use me as an example just for a minute because I'll go back in time to what was happening in my life in 2004 to 2006. That's when I wrote the uh, report I created for tarot.com or was uh, given the go ahead to write it. That was when I was writing a novel or a book that I never finished. Well, yeah, two different books actually. Um, one was a, a memoir, one was a actual fiction book, but I didn't finish them, but I did write them and I still may finish them one day. And uh, that was also when I was skill space learning my ass off because I was taking a psychology training program. It was very practical in order to become a therapist. And that was overlapping my education cycle back then. And also my relationship with my siblings probably did change because uh, I moved back to Canada from the US where I had been living for several years. Now, if I go back to 1986 to 87, again, it had a lot to do with writing and I was winning writing awards for literary journals for my short fiction, as well as screenplay and poetry awards during that cycle of my life. But also 86 to 87 for me involved a lot of change regarding that sibling relationship because that was when I moved to the United States of America. So you see those cycles repeat, right? Okay, so let's go ahead you will experience as an Aquarius sun, moon, and rising, especially rising, this expansion, as I said, of the third and a letting go of the ninth. You might let go of a foreign land, a foreign country. As I said, I moved to different countries during these cycles from my homeland. You may let go of a religious belief, spiritual philosophy, south node in the ninth house. You may let go of something to do with legal matters, court cases, and educational ambitions. You may surrender, release, and let go. If you're going to learn something, you're not going to learn like Astro, well, you're not going to learn like ancient history. You're going to learn something you can use, third house learning, or teach it, third house practical learning skills and tools. The crosshairs of six and 12 activate health, better health, uh, improving your health through what you wish to do for your daily health routines. It cha can change the nature of the sixth house, the work you do in the world. It can change your 12th house to do with yourself and doing in addictions. It can make changes to your spiritual beliefs. It can make changes to things to do with foreigners from foreign countries and earnings from foreign lands. So because six, 12, nine, and three are metacosmios houses connected to the liminal space of the in-between, connected to spirituality, a lot of this feels for a lot of you Aquarians like a spiritual journey, like a very active, deep activation of some of the fundamentals of spirituality. Because the third house is expanding and it's the house of the goddess, oracle, scryers, diviners, tarot card readers belong here. You may see more of them than you normally do. And you may rely on traditional dogma less or structures of religious belief as you let go of anything that feels too rigid for you. In January and February, you will experience, I mean, February and March next year, 24, Chiron, North Node, um, the unrequited echo chamber of, of echo, and also the energy of 
being abducted into some d- difficult circumstance of, of challenge underworld dark night energy in the third house. Now, technically, if you have a wounded sibling relationship, this can be superiorly healing for it as you emanate magical, miraculous, unconditional, loving vibes of Chericlo in the house of you flowing to the house of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, and you can mend those relationships next year, February and March. You may also mend a wound around writing, communicating, or um, expressing yourself here. This chironic energy began to activate your third house in 2019, and this can be a real turning point. If your purpose is connected to writing, if your deepest purpose is connected to being an oracle, diviner, scryer, or teacher, then this, or healer, then this is going to open up a huge amount of energy for you next February and March that allows you to maybe step more fully into those roles as a part of your life's purpose. If a sibling is pulled into the underworld next February, March, and they're having the deep challenge, this is somehow you being involved as a miracle maker, a healer, an unconditional love energy as you supply that vibe to a sibling. Or aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, or nephew. So this is an acute time of February, March, where some really deep wound is having a once every hundred year type of healing. This is definitely the wound of the third. It is about writing, communicating. It is about oracles and diviners and scryers and crystal ball gazers. It is about short distance travel. It is about your daily routines at some times. And it can also be about those extended family members. So some healing, the neighborhood belongs here. I don't know who needs to heal their neighborhood, but if you've never been feeling like down with your neighborhood since two, or your neighbors and neighborhood since 2019, you're going to have the healing of the neighborhood. And last but not least, if you have your IC in Aries and your midheaven in Libra as an Aquarius rising, then this could actually relocate your home as well during this 18 month eclipse cycle. Now, last and always first and always first and always the best is Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Let me swallow my kombucha. This is a money story. This is a money story. This is a money story. It's so simple. It's about making money, earning money, having more money come into your life, expanding your financial flow, resources. This began for you. Uh, well, first of all, you, this starts off this July in earnest, and it completes in January 2025. If you've been feeling a kind of chironic wound about your money situation and your resourcefulness ever since 2019, I wouldn't be surprised. This is going to turn it around and heal it in this next year. We'll get to that more in a minute. The axis of south node in the eighth. Be careful with stock market investments. Be careful around that because this is a depletion and letting go and a surrender, but it can be a loss in the stock market. So be careful around stock market investments starting in July 18th. Be very conservative over the next 18 months. South node in the eighth house is let go of inheritance money, let go of 401k money, or don't rely on those monies. Do not rely on spousal money. Do not rely on inheritance money. This is not where you're going to source your growth. Your growth is in your eighth, sixth, and second house of voice, calling, vocation, and earnings. And the earnings of the sixth, second house are generated by you. You make the money happen here. Now, also, because of the axis of fifth and eleventh house activations, some of you can win money during this eighteen-month cycle. That's like a lottery win. For example, it could happen. You may also get money coming through lucky breaks, speculative stock investments. So still be very careful in the stock market monies. You could also have some windfalls for sure, the kind of pennies from heaven vibe of the 11th house of good spirit where your fairy godmother lives. You also can change your friendship groups, social circles, clubs, and groups of belonging and significantly change in the 18 month a relationship to an elder sibling. That elder sibling can also benefit you financially. You may also have the experience of change regarding your relationship to your children as well as to your sexuality. And you could have a change of your connection in romance. Now, if you are looking for romance and you have crosshairs to the fifth house, you may get into a new romantic relationship or experience more sexual energy in an existing one. 
it's going to be next year in February, March, that Chiron joins with the North Node. And that North Node joins together, the two of them join together in your money house. And there's a profound healing of a wound, Chironic wound about self-worth, self-value, and your potential for generating your needs for food, shelter, water, survival, and thrival. Because you're also in an echo chamber, like I'll give you an example, you've been applying for a job and you never got anything happening since 2019, echo chamber, echo chamber is echo, asteroid is there, then you could turn that around February and March and the echo chamber goes away. Or you've been abducted into the underworld of financial difficulty and this is going to turn that around next February and March. And this is a profound once every 100 and 800 year earnings change. I did think I did mention to remind you to go back to 2004 to 2006 for these earnings stories playing out and money stories, as well as 1986 to 1987, on April of 86 to December of 87 for the same check back in time what happened then in the money earning story of your life. Inheritances are involved as well. If you're old enough, go back to August of 67 to April of 69. If you have anything you do with your dietary regime, food that you eat that you shouldn't, or wine or cigarettes or something you put in your mouth that you shouldn't, or you don't like the way you look, you don't like your appearance facially, then you may be healing that too next January, February and March as you come to terms with what? Chericlo in the house of self undoing. How do you undo yourself? Is it addictions? Is it, is it self-sabotaging behaviors? Is it the way you just literally are the worst, your own worst enemy? If that's true, Chericlo brings miracles, unconditional love. She's in an enlightenment house for goodness sakes that vibe through your sky next February and March and bring a profound healing. Now you could also have a financial healing through people in foreign shores or revenue from foreigners or foreign lands coming through your sky next February and March, really creating a financial upgrade for you as you heal some deep sense of dissatisfaction or futility in a money and earnings house next year in February and March. Stay the course. The long arc of this story is increased money, especially with the exaltation of your 11th house by Mars in January of 2024, which I'll be doing a whole video on Mars's visible rise in Capricorn back down then. But you're going to be increasing financial prosperity. A lot of you Pisces are going to, you ain't seen nothing yet, have a real uplift in your money story. But your whatever the wound is, the money wound, it's deeper than just, oh, I didn't get the job or something. It's more like, what? why do you not feel deeply self-worth? You know, your own internal metric of your worthiness here for that prosperity is being healed next spring. Okay, I hope that's useful. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it brings some goodness to your life. I'm so hot. I'm now going to go and decompress from what is a Vancouver, Canada, June 29th, hot, hot day. Patreon gets this first. They get to watch these videos without ads. They get it before the general public, usually a minimum of three days to sometimes a month before you guys get it on YouTube land. If you want to check my Patreon community in the description box below, go for it. It's five bucks a month. It's so freaking cheap. You don't get the ads. You have to watch ad free. Patreon changed a part of the feature. I can now upload the, the videos to, to Patreon directly. So it stays ad free forever now, not just during the early access period. All right, guys. Whew. Hope you're having a wonderful summer. My next video will be on Venus as she's going to be retrograding, and what she hasn't done for a long time in Leo since 2015. And we'll be talking about what that means for you as she retrogrades <laughs> on July 22nd ad, um, until September 4th. Yes. <sighs> Have a wonderful day. Love you guys. Hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget that helps my channel grow. Mwah.